Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Okay, well, come on. Let's sound like we serve a resurrected Jesus. Let's try this again. <laughs> the one that got up with all power in his hands. He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. We feel like we've seen a resurrected Jesus now. I am the Reverend Tammy Brantley. I am joined by our lead pastor, Reverend Jennifer Fenner, and we want to welcome you to our Easter worship service. We are so grateful that on this Resurrection Sunday that you chose to worship with us here at Epworth, whether you're online or in person. We're grateful that this morning we are reminded of the power that comes with a resurrected Savior. And so I just want you to think about all of those things in your life that needs resurrection this morning and claim resurrection in those areas. Amen? Amen. We begin with an opening word from the Gospel of Matthew. The chapter uh, is 28. It is the last chapter in the whole Gospel. And here we hear part of the resurrection story. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning and the angel's clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Then you will see him. Now I have told you. Please stand for our call to worship this morning. Run, run from fear and darkness. Hope is on the move together. Run to tell the world Christ is risen. Do not be afraid. Jesus has conquered death. We, we can, can proclaim, proclaim with, with great, great confidence, confidence that, that God's, God's love, love rules. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Good morning, church. Christ is risen indeed. Scripture says anything is possible with God, and I truly believe that. When we put our faith in him, it's amazing what can happen. So I invite you as we sing this next song to put your faith in the impossible on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Pop it out. Do you see what I see? What I see is I see lightning, I hear thunder, something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. signs and I see wonders, I see bursts of living color, dead things coming back to life again, I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Resurrection, resurrection, come alive, come alive, wake up sleeper, he is risen, we are risen with him, paradise, from wide open, he is risen. Are 
20 says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And the presence of God is definitely here with us today. Amen. It's inside all of us. Yes. So let's use this time to turn to those around you and greet them with a warm welcome. Mighty to save, 
So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together worship the one who hung, who bled, who died, and rose again so that we would never have to pay that price. And so this morning we come gathered to worship the name of Jesus, where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We come to worship the risen Savior, the Savior that came so that we might have life and to have life abundantly. We come to worship this morning, to worship the name of Jesus the Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, mighty in battle, the one who can handle every situation we find ourselves in. So we come this morning opening in worship, turning this worship experience over to Christ, that we become the living offering this day so that we can lift the name of Jesus on high. Holy Spirit, have your way in this worship experience today. We pray even now, God, that in the message that is coming forth, God, that people will hear the living Christ, that, that they would ask if they do not know him, what must I do to be saved? God, that in the message and the music this morning, that we will experience your love, that we will experience your grace, that we would experience your sacrifice. And God, we will give you all of the honor and glory for this is your service dedicated to your name. In Jesus the Christ's name we say together, 
Amen. As you are taking your seat, our first scripture passage this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 28, verses 8 through 20. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And the story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. When Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. There are three short scriptures from the epistle that Paul writes to the collective Roman community. And sometimes we get so caught up in the Easter story that we lose sight of the power of what is really being said through God's word. Romans 6, starting at verse 8, says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Christ. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death Christ died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Romans 8, 34 says, Jesus Christ, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. And Romans 10, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you and I will be saved. The word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, it's Easter, and we're somewhat distracted by a thousand things that need to get ready for later this afternoon, by those perhaps that we long to have beside us who have gone on in glory by the heaviness in our hearts that doesn't seem to quite fit the message, and by the depths of doubt that sometimes cause us to really ask, is it true? God, we pray this day for those who know the sting of death very closely, for those today who are asking about resurrection, not just in theory, but in the reality of their lives. We come today, God, knowing that there are many of us in many different ways bound, bound by our own unforgiveness, by our own anger, by our own addic addictions, by the consequences of our own actions. We need a resurrection. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would truly be a word for each of us, that you would raise us from where we are to where you call us next, and we will be faithful to take one step. In Jesus' name, amen. I confess to you that I usually start preparing for Easter sermons, wanting to focus specifically on the fact that I believe year after year, many of us gather on Easter Sunday not really sure 
if all of the pieces of the resurrection are true. And so I usually uh, desire in the Easter message to focus on the reality of what God through Christ is really doing on this day. But this year was different. This year, Pastor Tammy and I work with Epworth Preschool and Kindergarten, and we had to teach them the Easter story. We actually taught them Palm Sunday and Easter all together. When you're three, you don't have a lot of time for all the details, right? So I found this fantastic little video clip of these little claymation people that make their way to the empty tomb, except there was something in the story that I wasn't expecting. First of all, in this little child version of the resurrection, there was this whole interplay after Jesus dies by the religious leaders, pay attention, us religious folks don't ever make it out very well in this story. The religious folks go to Pilate after Jesus has been crucified, and they say to Pilate, we know that his disciples are going to steal that body. So can you please give us some of that empire power to protect the gospel? And Pilate allows them to take a guard. Now, there's all kinds of speculation about whether it's a temple guard or a Roman guard, but let's just go with the fact that it's Roman. And the Roman guard stands outside of the tomb. And I'm watching this children's, and I'm like, I don't remember any guards. And in this children's cartoon, they literally fall over and convalesce as the children are watching. And then, in this story, in this story, there is an earthquake while the women are carrying spices. To the, now, raise your hand if you knew that there was an earthquake when the women were carrying spices. I just want to see how much I haven't paid attention for years, right? And I'm watching this little video, and I'm thinking, what gospel does this come from? Turns out, it comes from the gospel according to Matthew. Now, this little insert here is from my daddy and from me. Because I'm not sure any of the rest of you are going to read this little sermon insert. But this just made my heart feel better because I did a lot of study on the Gospel of Matthew. You can follow along if you want. If not, just follow me. So I started to go back and look at the Gospel of Matthew. Then, on Good Friday, if you were here for the 7 o'clock Good Friday service, there was an, am an amazing amount of powerful preaching and teaching, and there were two other things that contributed to my heart. First of all, Reverend Dr. Lydia Munoz said in some passing statement, I think she said it in Spanish only and didn't translate it, she said, the crucified Jesus is the one who was in the empty tomb and the resurrected Jesus hung on the cross. I thought, what? She said, because if God is always God, he is resurrected and he is crucified all at once, all at the same time. And you read deeper into the Gospel of Matthew, and you know what? There is an earthquake in the moment that Jesus is resurrected, and there is a second earthquake. Anybody know when that happens? When he breathes his last breath on the cross. There are no earthquakes reported in any of the other Gospels. And this is what we do as people of faith. We actually don't take the time to go to the story. We want somebody else to tell us this. I want you to go home and open your Bible and read Matthew 27 and 28. Because God will speak to you in a way that I can't. On, in Matthew 27, and, I, and your, little, your little outline for my daddy and I, if you go all the way, Matthew 27, verse 50, then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And what happened? The earth shook and the rocks were split. Jesus hung on that cross because Jesus is God, God giving God's self out of amazing love for you and I, the crucified Christ, along with the resurrected one, right there holding the suffering of the world for you and for me. Never forsaken, Lydia would say. And God marks it with an earthquake at his last breath. 
and an earthquake when he is raised. I kept reading. It's amazing what you learn when you read the gospel. Let, let, let's keep going. The earth shook and the rocks were split. What happens in verse 52 in your little sermon outline or in your Bibles? I'm in Matthew 27, verse 52. What happens? The tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Where is Jesus when these tombs are being opened? Jesus is on the cross. Jesus is on the cross. This only happens in Matthew's gospel. Only in Matthew's gospel. Jesus is on the cross, the tombs are opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Then I love this. In verse 53, they're raised from the dead, and what do they do? They wait. They got to hold on, because Jesus Christ has to be the first fruits of the resurrection, so you can't go anywhere. Hang tight for a couple of days in that tomb in your new raised spirit, after Jesus' resurrection, it says that these individuals came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to many. The Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John are extraordinary in the way that they tell us what the resurrected Jesus did. Do you know that for 50 days, the resurrected Jesus walked around Actually, 40 days, I'm lying. 50 days takes us to Pentecost. 40 days, he walks around in a resurrected sense. He's talking to Thomas, who's touching his hands. He's on the road to Emmaus, breaking the bread. He's reinstating Peter after he feeds the disciples fish on the beach. Jesus, in this resurrected sense, is walking around for 40 days until we get to the ascension, and he is taken up into heaven in full authority. But it's not just Jesus who's walking around. And scholars would tell you that these are not, this is not Elijah and Elisha and Moses walking around. These are the people who have recently been buried right there. If you go to the holy city of Jerusalem, one of the things that will forever be in my mind is on the hill by the east gate are all the Jewish tombs. Because it is understood that when the Messiah comes, he will call forth to life the dead. This is Jesus simply hanging on the cross and people are coming to life. So if I go back over this gospel of Matthew, first of all, there's this amazing way in which there are two earthquakes which connect us to Jesus' last breath and to Jesus' resurrection. Second of all, there is this evidence that this is not just a story about Jesus. Turn to somebody and say the resurrection is not just about Jesus. The resurrection is not just about Jesus. Because if it was, it would be a cute children's program that we could turn off at the end of the day. But already, before Jesus is even raised, people who are dead are walking or standing up in their tombs. I wonder who they visited. I wonder what they said. The understanding is that those who were raised there actually died again. But it was only when Jesus is fully resurrected from the dead into the immortality that is Jesus that all of us are promised not just life and death, but what are we promised? Eternal life. It's easy to say that. It's hard to imagine these tombs being opened. The other thing that is really interesting to me is that the Gospel of Matthew paints this picture of the religious leaders who are constantly trying to twist the truth of who God is for their own interest and power. Raise your hand if you've ever seen somebody do that in the church. Twist the Gospel for their own interest and their own power. Never happens, does it? The religious leaders literally in in Matthew's gospel, go to Pilate and say, we know these disciples, we know that they're going to steal his body, and we know that it's then going to spread throughout the world that he's been raised. So can you give us some protection? So in Matthew's gospel only, they are given two things. They are given a guard, 
and they are given a seal. I'm in verse 62 of Matthew 27. Pastor Tammy read this. After the day of preparation, the chief priest gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter, some versions say liar. Sometimes the truth is actually called a liar. Sir, we remember what that liar said when he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. It is worse, they say, for the people to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead than it is to believe that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. That should be a clue to us. There's something extraordinarily powerful in resurrection. He has been raised from the dead. The last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the the tomb secure by sealing the stone. And that day, to seal a stone, we know that Jesus was not buried in the ground. He was buried in a cave. The cave belonged to Joseph of Arimathea who was actually one of the religious leaders who loved Jesus, knew who he was, but was terrified to stand up for what he believed. That never happens to us, does it? And so in order to seal this tomb, I never knew this either. Read the Gospel of Matthew. Literally, they put a rope across the stone and like wax or clay on either side that would have an imprint of the empire. Hmm. The empire tries to imprint itself on the resurrection of Jesus, but death cannot hold him. And then it says when the guards witnessed the tomb become, I still don't understand that. How did they know that the tomb was empty? It's sealed. Did Jesus resurrect it? It doesn't say. But somehow the guards knew they go back to the religious leaders. And what did the religious leaders do? According to the Gospel of Matthew. They pay him off. It's worse than Judas. Take this money. Take this money and tell everyone that his disciples stole his body. Somebody is working very hard that you and I wouldn't know the truth of the power of the gospel in our life. And then the, the reality of, of Jesus raising to life people who are in tombs without even touching them. At the Good Friday service, Reverend Kate McCarthy Fulton says, what if the one man besides the beloved disciple who was there with the women at the foot of the cross was Lazarus? What if? And she says, Lazarus would know the power of resurrection. I never thought about that. If you were Lazarus looking up at the cross... You've died and been raised to life by Jesus. What are you thinking as they're crucifying him? And I looked further in scripture, and do you know that there are six people who are raised to life before Jesus? And some of them we know, and I love the fact that God is faithful and true in seeking out the marginalized always. If you look in your sermon outline, first, Elijah raises a widow's son in Zarephath. It's all about those who are marginalized and needs God's grace. Second, Elisha raised a Shumanite son. Third, there's some poor Israeli dude that doesn't have a name that's literally recorded as the Israeli man, they're they're carrying him in a death procession, in a funeral procession, and they throw his body into a cave where Elisha is buried because they're being attacked by others. And what does he do? He comes to life. That's number three. Number four, who does Jesus raise from the dead? Who knows? Jairus' daughter. Remember? And then Jesus is walking around the streets of Jerusalem and there is the widow of Nain grieving because her only son has died and Jesus raises him. And who's the sixth one? Lazarus. So what does this mean for us? 
First of all, I want us to consider that this is not just about Jesus' story. This is about you and I. When you are at the very end of your resources, when you are burying the child that you thought was going to be your redemption, when you are grieving because God has taken too long to show up, resurrection happens. And when you have been raised like those six, I'm actually grateful for this. They were raised to life after death. Then they had to die again. Then they get to be raised again. I'm just grateful that now we live in the season where we get to be raised once. But I want us to contemplate what this means for us on Easter morning. There is a connection between the moment of Jesus' death and the moment of his resurrection. And the resurrected Jesus is with you when you're hanging on the cross. Because you are never lost or forsaken. The other thing that it means is that the actual physical act of Jesus rising up is such a powerful and victorious act that for years people have lied about it. Do you believe? Do you really believe? Not just that Jesus had nice teaching. Not just that Jesus was crucified because the Romans did that. Do you believe that God ended the cycle of sin and death and destruction by raising him from the dead? And do you believe that God can do that in your life? That is the true story of Easter. And so I want us to close by considering we live in a world that's fragile, yes? The world feels more dangerous, more fragile, than perhaps it ever has. And in that place of fragility, it might be easy to wonder what is the true point of resurrection. But if we believe, as we are called to believe, that God created us good, turn to somebody and say, God created you good. So good, exactly as who you are your race, your language, your sexual orientation, who you are is good. God created you that way. And sin enters the world, and sin enters the world through our desire to be in control, right? Resurrection is not about control if dead people are coming out of tombs, right? Our desire to be in control allows sin to enter and we're caught in this cycle. I want you to think about your life. Do you make a mistake and you enter into shame and to guilt and then you make a different mistake and then you lash out at somebody else and then somebody else lashes out at you and then you get to be justified and blame them and it goes round and round and round. And Israel argues with Palestine, and meanwhile, millions of children starve to death. There is a cycle. What if there was an end to the cycle? What if God, through Jesus Christ, is the end to the cycle of sin and death? What if Easter's claim is that Jesus breaks the human cycle of destruction because in our hands we'll ruin it? I want you to think about relationships in your life. If you have long-lasting relationships in your life, God usually needs to be in the center of that. Because there are days that they really, you know what you, right? And there are days when you are not worthy of who you say you are. And there are times that we need the grace and the love and the power of Jesus Christ to stand in the middle. So resurrection is about the empire, the empire is us, we know that, right? It's about the empire's desire to stamp out sin and death, and it's about God becoming victorious through that process, and the amazing thing is, Jesus from the very beginning makes it about you and I, and then there's these random people coming out of their tombs, just in case we thought it was only about Jesus. The last thing about the Gospel of Matthew that moved me as I studied it is that Luke tells the amazing story of Jesus' ascension. 
And in order to get to the ascension of Jesus, you got to go through a lot more passages of the road to Emmaus and all kinds of ways in which the resurrected Jesus shows up. In Matthew, he's short and sweet. Literally, if we go back to the gospel that was read, they make the tomb secure, and then... The, the women come and find that the tomb is empty. Hold on, i got to find my scripture. Then they have this whole interplay where they bribe the soldiers so that they tell everyone that Jesus' body was stolen. And in verse 16, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them. They saw him, they worshipped him, some doubted. Jesus came and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. In Matthew's gospel, you go straight straight from resurrection to the full authority of Jesus Christ. And who does Jesus give that authority to? You. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have authority. You have authority. Because Jesus says, you go. You go and tell them what I have taught you. You go and witness to grace and to love and to mercy. You go and tell them that they can try and kill you, but they will not triumph because there is a God who's seated at the right hand, interceding for you and I. Easter is not just about flowers. Easter is about power. And power that goes beyond the fear of the religious leaders. And power that goes beyond the control of the empire. And power, God is amazing in God's love. God takes it on the cross. It's the only way it makes sense to me. How would a God that I know and love sacrifice God's son? God takes it for God's self. Jesus is God. God takes it on the cross and then rises up, brings us with him. And in that resurrection, tells his disciples earlier, it's like the one time they listen, right? The one time. They go to Galilee, they're on the top of the mountain, Jesus appears and he ascends, and in the moment of his ascension is the call to go forth. So resurrection is your story and it is my story. And first of all, we have to believe that it actually matters, that the body wasn't stolen, but it was raised. Second of all, we have to believe that we can come out of our tombs, that we don't have to stay where we are, that there is a calling for you. It's not just about being dead and coming back to life. It's about when you are dead in your trespasses, when you are tied up in your grief and your shame, when all you can do is focus on the places that you have failed or somebody has hurt you, when you're tied up in all that mess. Who is going to raise the son of the widow of Zarephath? And who's going to stand with Mary and Martha as they grieve Lazarus? Resurrection is a powerful invitation for you and I to consider anew. So I'm going to read those Roman scriptures again. They sound different, I think. Romans 6, 8, 1 through 11. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also be raised, actually. <laughs> Old school says, yes. We will be raised or live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. That's why he's different than the first six. They all died again. He doesn't die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. And because we belong to him, it doesn't have mastery over us. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to whom? What's your life for? How do you spend your time? I don't mean do you show up in church every Sunday. That's not the point. The religious leaders did not make it out well in this story. Do you love people? Do you walk with those who are broken? Do you acknowledge your own brokenness and allow God to heal you? Do you declare victory in the face of the empire's injustice? Romans 8, 35, Jesus Christ who died more than that, who was raised to life. We get so focused on the death because we can see it. 
But really, the truest victory of all is the resurrection. Was raised to life, is seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is Jesus doing? He's praying, Lord Jesus, for you and for me, for this world. Just like he prayed before he gave his life, that they would be one. Last scripture, Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart. Believe what? What does Romans say? We, we forget this part. Believe in your heart what? That God raised him from the dead. Not that he was a nice dude. Not that you liked his teaching. Not that you think maybe he was prophetic. Not, you, not that you think it's a good idea to love your enemies. No, that God has triumphed over sin and death by raising him from the dead. You will be. And the other word for saved is healed. And so, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. May you and I live lives of resurrection. And if we stand in doubt, I love the Lord. I, I come to faith through doubt. It's why you have a 14-page document in your bulletin. I come to faith through doubt. If you have doubt, take it to him. He already triumphed over sin and death. He can certainly answer the questions you have. May God be glorified in our resurrected lives. Amen. Before we sing the song of response, I've actually been thinking a lot about John 19, verse 30. It was one of the verses that we heard on Good Friday. Jesus says, it is finished as he bows his head and his spirit leaves his body. And I think what I've been reflecting on the most is that when Jesus took his last breath, Jesus paid it all. He paid in full so that we could be free. It is finished. And I know that can be a lot to take in, personally speaking. I often doubt myself and have this unrealistic view that I need to be a certain way all of the time. But I am reminded that God says, come as you are. Amen. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of saving. You are worthy of sacrifice. So as we sing this next song, I just give God all the glory for that. Amen. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I can tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving so you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole so I can tell everyone I know Hallelujah Glory To the God who changed my life And I will praise you forever I worship you forever I'll give you glory forever because I am free because I am whole and I will tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping so you cleaned me 
up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know I'll give you glory Because I am free Because I am whole And I will tell everyone I know That I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up Inside, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving, man. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know as the praise team keeps singing this song. As they were singing this song, I, I, I think somebody needs to hear. He thought so much about you that you were worth saving, worth keeping, worth dying for, but the part that gets it so that we can live a life of freedom. And so I just want to speak life into someone this morning that Jesus died so that you can be who he created you to be. And the only thing that he asks is that you just believe in him. That's the only question. That's the only thing. The Bible says, as Pastor Jen read in Romans chapter 10, verses 9, if you confess, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross for you, then all you can say is, I'm saved. And so we invite you this morning as I pray. If you have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, all you have to do is believe. It's not difficult. It doesn't require, I grew up in the Baptist church, you don't have to come to the front of the room, sit in a chair, you don't have to do it. It's not for the people, it's between you and Christ. And so this morning, if you've never accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior of our life, we invite you. All you have to do is say, Christ, I believe. Christ, I accept you. I repent of my sins. You don't even have to tell me or Pastor Jen, it's just between you and Christ because the reality is we want everybody to live in the freedom that comes with Jesus Christ and so God this morning 
We come thanking you for knowing that we are worth something. Thank you for letting us know that you died so that we could be free and to live a life abundantly in your name. God, we thank you that on this resurrection morning, we know that we have resurrection power in our blood, in our veins, because we serve a resurrected Savior. God, we thank you this morning that whatever we came in here with, we know that by the resurrecting power of Jesus, Jesus Christ, that we can walk out of here as resurrected Christians. God, we thank you that for everything we stood in need of, for every area of our lives, for seasons of grief and loss where it looks like the day will never get bright, we thank you that you can resurrect through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, God, we pray for each and every person today with every burden they may have come in with, whatever heaviness that they come in with, that they will walk out of here knowing they can leave all of their burdens at the altar and walk as, out as resurrected Christians. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give your name the praise. It is in Jesus the Christ's name we say, amen. Amen. At this time, the ushers will come. They will lead us further in the offering. There are offering plates on both sides of the aisles. I invite you as you come also. You may have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you may not have accepted that he rose from the dead. And so if on this Easter Sunday you're ready to make that declaration in your life, that you have power, you have victory, and you have more than just healing, salvation, then I invite you as you come and we sing, Oh, Happy Day, which I love, I invite you, you can kneel at the rail, we'll pray with you, or you can stay right there. But make today the day that you choose to believe that he was raised from the dead. Amen. Oh happy day oh happy day oh happy day oh happy day when jesus was 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 he washed my sins away
And so, Lord, we raise these gifts to you, believing by faith that your power and your spirit will be among them, that we can go out and make disciples in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that these gifts will be a part of the kingdom building to grow the ministry of Jesus Christ here on earth. In Jesus' name we say, amen. amen. All right, I'm going to let Pastor Tammy welcome our visitors. Uh, if you can go ahead and do that, and then I'll do the announcements. We are so grateful that you have joined us at our 10... No, I, wait a minute. <laughs> 11, it's, okay, so it's really the 1030 service, but today it started at 11. So for all of you who have joined us online and in person, we are grateful to have you in the worship service one more time. We are grateful to celebrate Easter and the resurrected Savior with you. Do we have any first-time guests? If so, we're not going to make you stand up and come to the microphone. But raise, yeah, you're not first time. Yes, thank you. Welcome. If you would like to share your name, we'd love to hear it. That's all. Just, you can just scream it out. You ain't even got to stand up. Okay, maybe you need to stand up out here. <laughs> okay. Ta Tano Henry. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Because I didn't. <laughs> we get welcome it. you, sir. We pray that you have felt the spirit of God as you have worshipped this morning. Amen. Amen. We are grateful to have your family with us, Milagros. Welcome to them. <laughs> we welcome you. We welcome you. May God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. I also want to give a little shout out to my family that is here. They, they don't want to stand. They don't want to say their name. I'm just grateful they're here and I love them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep going. We got to shout out Jemima and Sadiq. Oh, yes. Where are they? Jemima and Sadiq, where are you? I had to do it. Where are they? They're in the back. They are beloved parts of Epworth. <laughs> Sadiq has recently buried his mother, and they are here worshiping with us. And we miss you. And I'm sure Ohio is fantastic, but we really but want you, you to come back. But you always can come home. Amen. Always. Welcome. We got a seat right here for you, right here. <laughs> Okay. I'm All right. A couple of announcements I want to share with you. I am pleased that our mom, this wasn't planned, but God is good. The memorial plaque uh, for 2023, those who made contributions uh, in honor of the digital thermostats, uh, the plaque came in. I have to tell you, between these 70 dedications and the names that are here, you are a community of people that is lifting up the communion of saints and those who are living and surrounding you uh, as, as you walk in faith. And so I give thanks to God for this. This will be hung where the other plaques are, um, but we are grateful for those who made contributions to that. We are grateful for the names of everybody here, honored and in memory of uh, uh, in, in the flower dedication. Uh, there are two other announcements. We launch always a sermon series that starts with... Um, uh, uh, Saturday, April 20th from 9.30 to 12.30, Pastors Jamie and Elliot Burnett of Soul Sabbath Ministries are coming. They're going to be teaching about holy disruption and how holy disruption can lead us to wholeness. I don't know about anybody else, but that seems like something that's relevant in my life. So I invite you to join us on Saturday, the 20th of April, 9.30 to 12.30, and then our four-week sermon series will continue. You'll also see in your bulletin we are launching our two-year $75,000 capital campaign to uh, redo the two bathrooms upstairs. I know you've wanted this. They will actually have air in it um, by the time we get through this, and the two downstairs. So I encourage you to keep that in mind over the next two years. Amen? Amen. Please stand for our closing song, and Epworth has a long tradition of having our children flower the cross, and so our children will bring in the flowered cross uh, as we sing. Hopefully this song is familiar to you all. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say. Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. 
Bodhi, run for it. And go from this place, declaring with who you are that the resurrected Christ is in you. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So are we now where Christ has 